Welcome to America's Heroes Group. Uh, Heroes Group. Good afternoon and welcome to America's Heroes Group Roundtable. Legally speaking, with Steve, October is National Breast Cancer and Domestic Violence Awareness Month. It's October 23rd, 2021. I am Vietnam veteran host Cliff Kelly. And I'm his co-host, Colonel Dr. Damon Arnold. Uh, so good to have you here, Cliff. Uh, uh, we are so, uh, every time we're uh, around you and blessed, and our executive producer is uh, Glenda uh, Smith. Yeah, right. Our digital media producer is Ivan Ortega of Scouts Honor Productions, doing a phenomenal job today. I feel like I'm in a movie studio with <laughs> Ivan today. Um, <laughs> today, we have our esteemed panelists, one of the greatest attorneys I've ever known, is Stephen J. Seidman, founding attorney of Seidman Law Office with over 30 years as an experienced and exceptional trial lawyer. Uh, he's focused on personal injury. Steve is America's Heroes Group partner, sponsor, and advisory board member. Um, he has uh, been supporting our veterans and their causes and their issues for some time, for years and years now. So make sure you uh, uh, look him up if you have any legal issues that you need to be uh, taking care of for you. Our discussion today is 2021 updates on legal issues. How are you doing, Steve? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, Doctor and okay. Cliff? It's, it's great to hear you both. Good yeah. to hear you, Consula. Great. <laughs> yeah, I think we're getting the band back together. It's a very exciting time for me. Um, <laughs> so, but I have a, a bunch of stuff to talk about today. I'd like to. Um, talk about something that we've been focusing on and uh, for a while and that's it's race disparity yeah. um, and and what happens and um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let this topic uh, die down yeah. um, and I, I mean I just was driving I have uh, a meeting and uh, heard something about race norming in the NFL settlement on a concussion I found that some staggering statistics and I know this is about veterans and we'll tie this up in a moment Wow. But there are 32 NFL teams. There are three black coaches, uh, three black head coaches. Wow. Uh, we knew what happened with Gruden uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, we also, uh, the, the concussion settlement, you might remember that the concussion settlement was a class action among the NFL players in the NFL. The lawyers for the players and the NFL reached a deal and it was found out, it was discovered, and this is coming to light in a very big way right now, that indeed they, uh, they uh, race normed, which meant that to start the, uh, the process uh, between white and black players, by the way, black players, 70% of the uh, players' uh, population versus the 30 for the white players, they mm. start off with a lower st starting point because they said that white people have a they are better cognitive abilities. So therefore, their concussions were worth more because they went from one baseline to a lower baseline. With a black player, they, see they started behind the line. Wow. And, hmm. and this is coming to light, and in fact, it's out there now. And uh, this all came to light off of a civil rights suit that started from one of the, the NFL black players. The, the worst part about this is the NFL front office, Goodell, and, and the lawyers – for the players agreed with this analysis where the black player was going to start out behind the line and that they'd have to prove a higher injury or worse injury because they didn't start off as, as, as I hate to say it, but as smart as the white player. That's outrageous. Why do I mention mm. that? Oh, wow. <laughs> I mentioned it for a lot of reasons, but I, I, I will start off by saying that uh, uh, there's a memorial service in honor of Colin Powell set for, for November 5th. Mm -hmm. that we now have a, a, a defense secretary, Lloyd Austin, who's African-American, and we would hope that things are starting to change. However, um, and, and another aside, at the uh, sergeant of arms of the U.S. House, uh, there's a fellow from Chicago, General William Walker, right here from our hometown, our hometown who's now been appointed sergeant in arms for the U.S. House. Um, he's from the south side of Chicago, he, uh, he, he makes history because he's now the first black man to become the sergeant of arms for Congress, appointed by Speaker Pelosi last spring. And his job is to keep the U.S. Capitol building secure and its members safe. We'll all remember 
the debacle that we had last January. Right. He um, he was raised in Chicago's Auburn Gresham neighborhood. He credits his success to the education he received at State Savannah Academy and Leo High School. And so we see that's changing. Mm-hmm. However, disability analysis, and Dr. Arnold and I have talked about this on the air, um, the, the prevailing issue uh, that was researched uh, by a, a young man in uh, college or in graduate school getting his master's, he researched the fact that the process uh, for, for disability analysis in the military for veterans uh, is that the uh, African-American uh, disability applicant will not receive as much as in the rating process as their counterparts were white. Yeah. Okay, and and we have seen this. It started off in, on the show because Dr. Arnold and I, Dr. Arnold, uh, anecdotally, through his experience, said that he he had that. Uh, he, he could see it happen, yeah. and uh, mm-hmm. and in the process for receiving disability status is you go to the medical center for initial assessment. Mm-hmm. They complete a physical checkup to find out what medical issues the veteran has from the time in military, and then they give a rating. For example, a white veteran may go with a broken ankle from their military service and get a 20% rating, whereas an African-American veteran going in with the same problem might only get a 10% rating. Hmm. And interestingly, you know, you would think, oh, that's, that's so crazy. But in fact, prejudice runs deep in our country. We have seen historical racial disparities. I mean, look at the Tuskegee syphilis trials and the Henry Andrew Lacks. You remember Henrietta Lacks was an African-American woman whose cancer cells were used to form the polio vaccine without mm-hmm. her knowledge or mm-hmm. her understanding of what it was going to be used for. And it, to this day, her family's received nothing and they can't even afford basic health insurance. So why do I mention this? Because the Yale folks over at Yale have actually uh, started a lawsuit uh, kind of going for this disparity. In other words, they're looking into this disparity and ask for information. I think, quite frankly, that this has got to be constantly um, uh, looked at, and I I do think that um, we need some FOIA request uh, to see really what that disparity is. Just like the race norming that we saw in the NFL from an agreed process between the coaches or between the, the, the lawyers for the NFL and the NFL, this stuff goes on. It well, that's what I, that, pardon me, but, but this is what I wanted to ask you. I think that's what you said earlier. 32 NFL teams, National Football League teams, only three black coaches? The head coaches, that's, that's what the statistic that was just quoted to me uh, or just heard on, the, on an MSNBC uh, expert. Uh, he wrote mm-hmm. the Kaepernick effect. He said there are three head black coaches. That's it. Um, And he said the NFL front office less. Uh, How many GMs do you see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the percentage of players who are black versus white? I mean, come on. It's it's disparate, and it's ridiculous. And then they they race norm with these concussion settlements where how do you start a human being and just assume and agree to this if you're his lawyer or their lawyers – that the black athlete is going to be less intelligent because that's what they said. They're starting them out behind the line than a white athlete. So the, the the black athlete has to have a worse concussive disorder and less and more cognitive disability than the white, because the white is just starting out that much better. That's ridiculous. And it, it it shows how pervasive that this, um, this, uh, uh, it has been going on in our society. Um, it's just a pervasive prejudice that we see in the NFL. I also heard that the average age in the NFL now fan is now at 38 years old. That's a good thing because we are finding that the younger people, as opposed to the good old boys, so to speak, the younger people are, are less tolerant of this type of behavior. So, you know, it's NFL season, which is why I mentioned this. And uh, legally, I think we have to keep our eye on the ball as veterans, advocate to make sure that the disability rating system is is fair to all and um uh, and by that i mean take the prejudice 
out of the disability rating system. So I'll follow that litigation and, and, and keep everybody uh, up to date on yeah, that. Yeah, please do that, Stephen. You know, one of the things I was wondering about when you were talking about this legally is that um, there is still one other issue that um, I'm wondering about is if, if I come back from, uh, you know, Operation Iraqi Freedom or Enduring Freedom in, let's say, 2005 or 2006, if I put a claim in and it's denied and uh, later on I, you know, do get that claim uh, to go through um, or they don't even take it seriously, they don't even allow to put, to put it in my military medical records, is there going to be some kind of remedy maybe potential down the road because uh, that means I've missed out in 15 years of coverage if I had a uh, disability that needed to be covered. Um, you know, for, you know. Personally, I had to, you know, go and pay like $120 every two months, you know, for a massage therapist for my lower back, and that comes out your own pocket and all that. So I'm not sure of how, you know, even if they do give you the disability down the road, you know, how they make up for the time that was lost. <laughs> As part of this, it starts off as the you know the old water downhill. It starts off as a dribble and then gets into a waterfall. Yeah, it, the yeah, thing that yeah. we start off at is right now is finding out and getting the real statistics on the black versus the white disability analysis. Right. Once they yes. do that, yeah. I mean this class action should remedy the damage caused by it after we see the statistical abnormalities and anomalies. Yes, because once yes. you see that, hey. You know, I've lost out on 15 years, then the government should be responsible for paying 15 years of those benefits and for what you have paid out of pocket, as well as what that disability, uh, that improper disability analysis has meant to you. Yeah. Um, so that that's my feeling on it. And I think, you know, kudos to, to the Yale group, kudos to this person who in 17 wrote this very nice treatise on how this was happening. And he actually did a, a study and found it. But we know in reality it's happening. How do we, how do we uncover it? It's yes. going to be a more difficult right. problem. Okay. Once you uncover it, it, seems to me you could get back your benefit. Yeah. So, so well, well, Consular, what's the best way that we can attack that? Well, uh, I think right now it's being done. Uh, there's this lawsuit filed. We have to keep a, a, a good eye on that. But... The best way is what we did before, Cliff, with regard to when we changed a little bit. We got involved in, in the sexual uh, – I mean, Glenda Smith, who our fearless executive producer. Mm -hmm. um, we, we know that um, we, the big cause celeb was the sexual uh, discrimination, the sexual stuff that was going on in the military, and the, the, the attacks on women, including this young woman, um, Ms. Gian. But the fact is that uh, the only way to, to deal with these things and the inequities, including the change of law, how we couldn't sue for malpractice in federal in malpractice in, in that type of thing, is to go to our legislators, to fight with the senators and the congressmen, and to make uh, and make a stink about it. If you don't make a stink about it, nothing's going to happen. So the best way to attack it is to go to the people like uh, the congressman, the congresswoman. Mm -hmm. um, and, and senators, you must make a stink. Everybody must. And all the vets who might be listening today who think that they have been wronged should be writing their congressmen or calling them and, and senators and making sure that that gets done. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's some uh, the other things I know you are, you know, doing updates in general. You have so many new updates. Uh, but anything else going on, Steve? Yeah, a lot of stuff, actually. So why <laughs> <laughs> Funny you should mention that because I got five minutes left. So <laughs> it, it, the Army vets, uh, I, I like this one because it was about disability. Here's an Army vet of accused of faking paralysis to get $1 million in VA benefits using some of it to buy a BMW. How about that? Mm -hmm. So it's the exact opposite. We have a situation in which an Army veteran from Maryland faces 30 years in prison after he they said he falsely claimed to the Department of Veterans Affairs that he was a paraplegic. Well, it was interesting. He won all the benefits because of that, and then they found him doing selfies in the gym, uh, deadlifting weights, and doing everything else. So mm -hmm. he's in a whole lot of trouble. That's kind of the opposite yes, of what yes. it is. Yes. Um, one of the other things legally, and 
And uh, we see, we, you know, nowadays we, we've seen this with the college athletes, the sexual abuses by the doctors who were working. Uh, you know, we saw this with Dr. Nasser, Nasser in, uh, in Michigan State University in the gymnastics, in, in, in the U.S. gymnastics group. Well, actually, the U.S. just agreed to a $7 million settlement in a Kansas VA hospital sex abuse case. Hmm. And what that is is that they're going to pay $7 million to settle claims from eight veterans that were sexually abused by a former physician assistant at Veterans Affairs Hospital in Kansas. Uh, so hmm. these, these veterans, they served in Iraq or Afghanistan, they allege they were subjected to unnecessary general exams and other procedures by Dr. by a Mark Wisner while he was a physician's assistant at the VA Medical Center in Leavenworth, Kansas, between 2008 and 2014. He's been sued by about 100 veterans. More than 80 veteran 80 veterans settled their lawsuits against the governor against Wisner for already 6.7 million. He was convicted of aggravated sexual battery and related charges in 2017 and sentenced to 16 years in prison. But now the damage aspect comes, and most of uh, the people are getting in between $700,000 and $1.4 million because of that abuse, because of what they suffered at this guy. The interesting part about this is for years, um, um, actually, the, the, the people – we kind of ignored at the Veterans Affairs Committee. They never sought an, uh, an investigation of what was happening at the Leavenworth VA or inquired about the veterans' well-being. And um, a senator or two have now raised concerns about why not. Uh, I think a lot of these people just sort of poo-pooed and said, oh, that couldn't have happened. Um, so uh, that, that's, that's some litigation. Uh, you know, we've talked about before that if you feel mm-hmm. as a, a, and you're being treated at the mm-hmm. Veterans Administration that you've been guilt, that been uh, subjected to malpractice, uh, that you do have uh, causes of actions, you do have lawsuits you can um, uh, go forward on. Well, stay, is this, this happened at a VA hospital? Yes, it happened at the VA hospital in Kansas and Leavenworth at the Dwight Eisenhower VA Medical Center. Wow. And by the way, Cliff, you know, if it happened there, all right, it's not so unlikely or so unheard of. It probably happened at, a, at many other places mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. there were smoke, there's fire on these things. A lot of sick people out there. Yeah. A lot of sick people. So, uh, yeah, it happened at the uh, VA uh, 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 facility in Leavenworth, uh, Kansas. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah. So, so, so um, do we have any you know, anything? You know, what else is going on as far as you know? You've been uh, talking before about you know these um, uh, things where veterans are trying to come forward with claims and do things, and we're you know uh, sort of running out of time. But I, you know, uh, I'm really looking forward to talking to you again, mm-hmm. Steve, about this um, issue about race norming and that kind of thing. That's very very interesting. Because when you enter the military, you are a military uh, personnel, soldier, uh, you know, s- uh, sailor, a, and a marine. So, uh, but we're running out of time. But I really want Thank to. Um, I want to have you know we'll be having more and more conversations. I know right. Steve, and I'm going to. Uh, we're going on to a commercial break, and we will be back really shortly. Thank you, Counselor. Thank you. Have a nice day, guys. Bye bye. 